today is Vesak Eve, tomorrow will be Vesak Day. Yesterday I've seen the flower preparation, so things are already in progress, a lot of wholesome effort. And it's a good opportunity. You will hear a lot about the Buddha these days, because it's really it's Buddha Day, it's the day of the Buddha, the Buddha's birth, the Buddha's awakening, the Buddha's passing away. So you have probably heard many times the life story of the Buddha. I would like to use this time to reflect a little bit on the goodness that has come into our lives through the Buddha and through the Dhamma. And also reflect on the wonderful qualities of the character of the Buddha. There's a story where Venerable Ananda was talking to the Buddha and he said, Bhante, I think half of the holy life is noble friendship, friendship with wise people. And the Buddha said, do not speak like that, Ananda. It's the whole of the holy life. Because with me as a noble friend, you learn the Dhamma. So without the Buddha, there would be no Dhamma. It would be like the world would be very poor. The world would look very different. And our lives also would look very different. If we would not have this wholesome influence, this beautiful influence of the Dhamma, if we would not have very clear instructions of the Buddha, how to develop what is wholesome, how to abandon what is unwholesome, it would be much more difficult. Even if we like to live good lives, it's very good to have guidelines. It's very good to have a teacher like the Buddha that we can look up to. And one of the qualities of the Buddha that we recite when we recite the Itipisogata is Vichacharana Sampano. The Buddha was perfect or without any flaw, without anything lacking in wisdom and conduct. So the Buddha was not just a teacher that, who would tell us to this, to that, but himself he would take it easy and would live an unwholesome life, but just in the opposite. The Buddha was the best example really of the Dhamma. On one occasion the Buddha said, whoever sees me sees the Dhamma, whoever sees the Dhamma sees the Buddha. So even the Buddha is not around anymore. When we make an effort to understand and to practice the Dhamma, we can get very close to the Buddha and we can understand the direction in which the Buddha was going in. The Buddha was Sugato, he has well gone, literally. He was somebody who has gone to the end of the path, to the end of the practice. But even if at this time we're not as far as the Buddha is, we can get an understanding of the Buddha through the goodness that comes into our lives through generosity, through sila, and developing our mind, this beautiful path of the Buddha. Yeah. Thinking about the Buddha's character, I find one thing, thing that is outstanding from the beginning is how relentless or how uncompromising the Buddha was with what is good. If you remember his life story, he was practicing for many years austerities, he was doing it really to the utmost extent, nobody was as energetic as him. But then he understood that this is not the right way, so he gave it up. Even though he had a position, he was admired, he was an example for others. As soon as he understood this is not the way, he gave it up. Also when he was living with his other meditation teachers, he had the same attainments or even higher attainments as his teacher. But that wasn't enough for him, like a position as a teacher or any praise or blame. Just as long as he saw suffering, he knew the path has not come to an end. And I think we can take that as our example, really. That we don't rest content with kind of a good life or getting along somehow, getting through our lives without big troubles, but really to consider this is a very precious opportunity. We were born as human beings and something very rare has happened. The Buddha has been arising in the world. A Buddha has been arising a Samasam Buddha, that's another quality of the Buddha. There's also another word, another concept, the Pacheke Buddha, somebody who is awakened on his own, but he doesn't have this ability to teach. And Buddha Gautama, our Buddha, has been a Samasam Buddha, somebody who really has all this ability to understand the Dhamma and to teach it. And for us, really, it's just to take it and follow in his footsteps. It's difficult enough, I know, because it sometimes goes against the grain, it sometimes goes against our comfort, but it's worth it. And again, luckily we have examples like the Buddha and other Arahants and people who have realized the Dhamma. It's not like 
you have to give up the things that you like and then you feel miserable and it's just a horrible life because you're lacking so much. But really, it's the joy and happiness that comes from freedom, from freedom, from defilement, from not having to follow our unwholesome inclinations. So we can take that also as an example to see, yeah, the Dhamma is actually leading in a direction that is very positive, that is very wholesome and that brings a lot of good things into our life, even if it's difficult at times. We may not be as strong as the Buddha. You may remember he sat down in his meditation and he said, I will not get up, I will not move until I reach awakening. It may take a little bit longer than one night's effort for us, but still to take that as an example, at times when it's maybe challenging to keep our precepts, when it's maybe challenging to lean towards what is wholesome, when it would be easier to go away of comfort, but maybe not so wholesome. So to take that as our example, to lead a wholesome life and also really to reflect in gratitude if the Buddha would not have been so determined if he would have gotten up if he would have been content with some worldly renown or being a big teacher we wouldn't have all this we wouldn't have all this of course it's not only the Buddha it's the three jewels that are really responsible for bringing this goodness into our life if he wouldn't have taught the Dhamma as you might also remember at the beginning, when after he became awakened, he thought this is troublesome, people won't understand that. Most people are not inclined towards the Dhamma. And the story goes that Brahma Sahampati came and invited him. And then he saw, yes, there are some people who have little dust in their eyes. So we can even consider ourselves as people who have less dust in their eyes than most people. We have found the Dhamma, we have kind of an inspiration in the Dhamma. And even many people who call themselves Buddhists are not really so interested in the Dhamma. So this is something very wonderful, a very precious opportunity. And then we also have the role of the Sangha, who didn't let the Dhamma die. The Sangha is not only the monastics, but when we chant the verses, a Savaka Sangha, that is the Sangha of those who have realized the Dhamma, lay people or monastics. So, yeah, this few reflections on the gratitude that can arise gratitude but also an inspiration to practice and to develop further in the Dhamma, to keep the good things and as much as we can to develop further in the Dhamma in Dana, Sila and Bhavana. So reflecting on all this goodness and reflecting on the Buddha, the Buddha is really the best field for mudita, developing sympathetic joy with that freedom and with that wisdom, with all the good qualities, with his abilities yeah, and the freedom that the Buddha understood is not only possible for a Buddha, but for everyone who follows that path. So developing this gratitude and appreciation and also recognizing how the teachings of the Buddha have influenced our lives, how much goodness has come into that. And thinking of that, we can go on to the next step to dedicating the goodness, dedicating the merit, thinking of our departed friends and relatives and whoever actually, all living beings who like to take part in the merit and maybe with all these reflections we can also really think in gratitude of all those who have been instrumental in making it possible for us nowadays to have the Dhamma in our lives, the people, but also many, many, many people throughout the centuries and millennia who have protected the Dhamma and practiced the Dhamma, protected the Dhamma, shared the Dhamma. So rejoicing in all that goodness and sharing all that goodness that we have developed with our departed friends and relatives, let's recite together the verses of sharing merit and uh, yeah, dedication of merit. Let us now invite our departed relatives, friends and all beings to rejoice in the merit we have made. Let us recite together. Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Eta vata cha amihi sampadang punya sampadang. Sambi sata anumodantu, sambasampati siddhiyat.